Hey everyone, Yevi here with the Inkwell, and today we're going to take a look at two inks. Why two inks? Because of this review I saw on the internet. In it, the author compares Pilot Orochizuku Inaho as a more expensive version of Noodler's Rome Burning. So today, we're going to take Orochizuku Inaho and Noodler's Rome Burning, along with my Lamy Safari with a medium nib, and we're going to put this to the test. Now, I will be using the Safari as a dip pen, but don't worry, I'll be cleaning it in between each ink. That way we don't get any cross-contamination or do anything that could potentially ruin our head-to-head -head shootout. Now, for the writing samples. Our first ink is, you know, I'm actually not going to tell you what ink I'm going to use. Instead, I'm going to leave them off to the side, and I'm going to go ahead and dip the ink and let you guess which one we're using. So let's go ahead and move on to ink A. So, while past me is doing the writing sample, future me, voice over me, is going to explain why there's actually a voice over me. While I was doing the initial writing sample and the initial filming, I managed to mess up my mic placement not once, not twice, but four times. I'm still trying to figure out how I did that, because I really liked what I said during the take, but I'm not going to script it out, and there's just no way that I'm going to, like, remember everything I said. So, here we go. I'm finishing the writing sample, and as you can tell from the ink, it's a somewhat gold, I'd compare it to, like, 3.2, like a mix of 3.2 and 6-point beer, somewhere in there. So really, I call it gold, because that's what it is. It, it just reminds me of a gold beer. Now, the next thing is shading. You can tell by the sample there that there's a little bit of shading, but not too much. And in the writing sample itself, in the lettering, there's not much as well. So we're calling it very little shading. and. If we take a look at the writing sample, you can tell there's no sheen, no sheen at all. Pretty straightforward ink. A little bit of shading, but for the most part, what you see is what you get. Now, let's take a look at the dry times here. In these writing samples, I did a 1 second, a 5 second, and a 10 second, I believe. So. You can tell by the one second, it's pretty much like not holding up at all. By the five second, it starts to tame. And then for the ten second, we get a slightly better result, but it still takes longer than I would prefer, if that makes any sense, to get to a full dry. And there you go. Ink A. Now, past me is going to go ahead and put the lines on the paper for the water test, and then we will move on to ink B. So in between the inks, I took about five minutes to go ahead and fully clean the pen, and even checked it on a paper towel and a couple pieces of paper to make sure that there was uh, no residual ink. So for inked B, inked B, ink B, you can already see a difference. This one is coming out a lot darker. It's pretty much a no-brainer that these two inks are now thoroughly different. In hindsight, if I'd been thinking about it, I probably should have made another beer analogy when I was doing the writing, but I can do that now. If ink A was a three-point beer, this is definitely a 20-point lager. This is the kind where if you have too much, it will put you on your butt. Now, let's take a look at the color. It is just a straight, what you see is what you get, copper slash bronze. If anything, I would almost call it a sepia or brown offshoot more than a yellow or gold ink. But for this review, we're going to go ahead and stick with copper and bronze. As you can tell, there is no shading in the writing sample. And as you can see here, there is no sheen whatsoever. 
Now let's take a look at the wetness or the dry time here. So one second, it's already showing that it's going to dry quick. We do the five second test and it's dry. This is a very fast drying ink. Like, it's actually the fastest drying ink I have in my cabinet. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the lines on this piece of paper for the water test. And then we're going to go over to the final thoughts and take a look at how they did. All right, so we've got ink A on the left and ink B on the right. As you can see, both inks lost their top layer of ink. So there's no more yellow, gold, copper, beer look to them. Ink A gave us a medium to light blue, and Ink B on the right gave us this kind of royal purple look. Being honest, both of these inks handled very well, and both of these inks held up very admirably underwater. So which ink is which? As you've probably already guessed, Ink A is Pilot Iroshizuku Inaho, and Ink B is Noodler's Rome Burning. If you got that right, give yourself a sample vial of ink. Just don't drink it, whatever you do. Whatever I said on a previous podcast I used to be on, don't drink ink. So to circle it back to the premise, Pilot Oroshizuku is not an overpriced version of Rome Burning. At $20, Oroshizuku is an ink of its own. And at $12.50, so is Noodler's Rome Burning. If you want to pick up these two inks, head on over to penchelay.com, click on the radio podcast link at the top of the page, and enter an Inkwell in the How You Heard About Us section. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Inkwell and floor3media.com slash the Inkwell or the Inkwell.com or yevgeny.com. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful week.